<coughs> Hi folks, I've had a hell of a job trying to get this uh, webcam set up with the right exposure and gain and all sorts of rubbish. Uh, palette, there we go. Uh, yellow, raw sienna, cab red, ultramarine per number. I've coated this with a, a neutral colour, burnt umber. Um, often asked why do I do it, why do we do this? Well, if you put a, a, a dark colour on, on a white background, it will look too dark by contrast. And, and it will end up, if we carry on in that way, it will end up much darker. But if we, um, so what you, what you tend to do is to paint or adjust the colours lighter than they would normally be. And you end up with a with a an, a, a painting that's far too light. But if you start off with a mid tone like that, you can your colours will, will sort of register as the, of, uh, as more of a correct contrast. So it will, it will either look too light or too dark. It will be about right. So that's why we do it. But you can with with experience, you can you can easily paint on a, on a white one but I've, I've painted this like that because of the problem I'm having with the exposure on this Logitech in this brilliant sunny morning can't knock it I mean it's a lovely beautiful day the end of winter we've had some fabulous weather so what I'm going to do is, is to paint a sort of uh, uh, marsh grass which I encounter locally in a, in a beautiful park called Morden Hall Park, the wetlands. It's it's not artificial. The, the water table here is very high. And in this particular park, it's quite marshy. <coughs> and the National Trust who administer this park, they, uh, they built a boardwalk about three years ago, all the way through the wetlands. It's about 200 metres long. But it, it uh, meanders and it goes through this beautiful wetland, marshy, and there's a bit of a pond there which the children in schools are, uh, get involved with. And there are people that know what they're talking about and can describe the wildlife, the newts and toads and all the frogs and stuff like that. And uh, they're surrounded by trees and housing houses and factories all sorts but it's a very beautiful area especially when it the, the you can't see the the buildings around this park for leaves so i'm going to to do something like um with the marsh grass inspired by paul Rowland, who who put a hickling broad painting that's norfolk is a is a uh, is a lovely English county that was drained a couple of centuries ago by the Dutch. I'm just going to go and put a, let's get some colour on there, just some some blue. And he he found his uh, shorthand way of doing marsh grass. Seagull was the great one. He lived in Norfolk. He lived and worked and died in Norfolk. And he found his way of expressing it. My way when I first I went, went to Hickling Broad, I had a holiday there some many years ago, thirty years ago. Um, and I took a lot of photographs and I tried to paint it and in watercolour. And I used the, the time old method of scraping out with a razor blade. But I, it was just so that the paper was almost non existent by the time I finished. And it didn't really work. So uh, I, I based my later painting of salt marshes, not so much, um, marsh grass, thatch, the stuff we thatch with, uh, bulrushes, straw. And I, I love Seagull's method of doing it, but Paul Rowland has come up with, a, with his way. I'm not going to copy it, it's what he does. I'm going to do my own. Just thicken that up a little bit, using a little bit of water as well. I think I'll use, I prefer to use some medium. So let's, uh, I've got some here. 
No, just a bit of dilute PVA glue. It's not too runny. You can't see it. See, the sun is so bright. I wish I'd, when I changed these uh, blinds, they don't last forever, these Velux blinds, for blackout blinds rather than the, the these that just take the sting out of the sun. Right, okay. So I'm going to put a row of trees. Paul, Paul did, did, did his row of trees. Uh, but to Morton Hall, there, well, you've got oak trees and smaller trees, larger trees. So I'm just going to put some in. I'm, I'm not using black in this one, I'm using blue, yellow. Blue burnt, um, burnt umber. And we'll just put in fairly low. But I'll... Uh, make them a bit larger so I don't want anybody to say that I was copying Paul but, I, but since I mentioned him everybody's going to have a look at Facebook there's some lovely paintings on uh, British Impressionists it's a really good good channel to read ok now I'm going to put, he put a Put a, the lake in the Hickling Broad, but I'll, I'm just going to put in a uh, well, just put in some glasses, distant. I've done this one before. And I've certainly done seagulls uh, broad. Rob Manson published a couple of books on Manson with his lovely, beautiful North, well, not all Norfolk, some of his trips abroad. But he was a, just a fantastic artist. Now that's, oh, I don't know, I can't get that much brighter without you know, overexposing. Oh, look. Ooh, look at that. Well, that's, that's a bit better. <coughs> now here, we've got uh, the the grasses, but I'm going to put in... No, I'll just put in some water pond. Just looking... Got the same colour as what the, the sky is going to be. Thicken that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'll put the marsh grass along here. This, I'm thinking that from the ballpark, this 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 pond, there's been a, a family of coot, coots on there for months, all through the summer and autumn. Well, the autumn anyway. Beautiful. But they're all sort of fending for themselves now. We ride our bikes uh, on a, every Tuesday morning and we uh, we try to uh, obey all the country code, but we're not supposed to ride our bikes through there. Uh, let's I use this big brush. I want to put in some some darker an approximate colour and. Um, Put that across there. Mixing a bit of ultramarine and burnt umber gives a nice dark. Right? Now 
I don't want the blue or the brown to show as blue and brown. I want them to be mixed. Burnt umber and ultramarine are a, a mix made in heaven. Right, okay, we can put some lighter bits in there in a minute. I'll just go back on that sky. But keep your brushes lovely and clean. If you don't, keep them also or wash them out. And as you go, you will find that they all come up. Right, let's have a, we'll have a bright, but a bright sky. Using a bit of the uh, PVA glue in the mix. You have to build this up if you're working thinly like my client. Quite like that. Okay, keep that like that. That's uh, <coughs> the sky. I want some light cloud. I want it quite light on the horizon. But I'm going to have to dry it. I'll draw the hair dry. So bear with me. So I can crack on, otherwise it'll just take too long again. The one I did for you yesterday it took ages. Uh, You can't do that with oil, unfortunately. <coughs> this Stay Wet palette, which I've uh, had it for years, I did have to replace it because the lid broke, which was unusual for the Masterson. The, the big one I used, I uh, put my uh, watercolour palette in that. Okay, so let's go back onto that sky. I want to thicken up the white and the blue. Call this a bit. Well, that's right. See, whatever you do, you know you're going to change. So you, you don't have to try to do portraits of everything as you go that comes later also for those of you that are struggling it takes a long time to learn to do to do this there'll always be people that are better than you that's uh But just do it and carry on doing it, you will get better. But it all takes time. When we get impatient with ourselves, we, we despair, we think we'll never be able to do a sky or do a tree like Dave or Paul or Ron or Alan or Steve. But we've been doing it a long time. I know, I think I should have been with quite a bit better than I am now. Such a such a rhythm there. Eh? Alright, let's just brighten up that uh, foreground. Whoops. The good thing the great thing about using the PVA glue as a medium, apart from helping the flow a little bit, not a lot. Oh, that is terrible now. 
the side of brightness down. So that exposure them just a touch. Now there's a bit where that exposure I've got it all on manual so I can adjust it as I go along. Okay. I'll let I'll let that go. I quite like that effect. Look, it's changes when I cover up the light. I could fix it I suppose. Let's see. Uh a look if I can save. Okay, now that no that won't that won't change. I can always change it later on. Right. Uh, that separation there is is good because I can put some bright colour on the tips of the mask glass is catching the the light but I can also well let's, let's do that a bit, bit white from there let me just press it out that shadow or a reflection shall I say it's coming down there right now we do those uh, clean brush and put in those background trees and I used blue brown and that's Cadmium yellow. No, that's too too light. It's incredible weather for this time of year. I've the last two days I've. Uh, the charcoal barbecue. Touch of red in there, that's right. Look at that dark along that horizon there. So we can counter change. I haven't used much of that so raw sienna yet. Paints are drying on my palette. I've got them on a bed of uh, wet towering and a membrane right okay going to put some nice light stuff on the along here now We don't want a straight line there or any obvious solidarity, solidness, solidity. Anybody remember seeing Tom Keating, the forger? 
he was very popular in the 70s and 80s he died he was very he, he had a sort of heart condition and he because he was a heavy smoker as well but he did die but he was wonderful his knowledge of of the artists he he never copied he just did things in the style and was oh wonderful he did the fighting temeraire the great turner masterpiece he did it the other way round but he couldn't earn a living a painting unbelievable his forgeries go for about more well, 20 years ago they were going for ten thousand pounds each but a lot of his paintings that are probably hanging in galleries now if they're ever clean the paint will come off and they would see you've been fooled or something like that written on it oh let's just just drag that down a little bit just good that a bit of reflection there okay well that's that's looking right there I just want to get well it's a bit sketchy it's a bit thin that paint but but I don't know I, I, I'm quite quite pleased pleased with that there's no detail in it no calligraphy in here uh, you can easily put some in by using a brush like this that, that I've got these old Chinese brushes these cheap ones have had this years 20 years mostly I use them mostly for oil but um, you can uh, if you clean your brushes with paraffin kerosene it's sliding a bit too much um, don't clean your brushes with it or don't use it for your brushes at all or all white spirit oh yeah kerosene yes yeah, sorry I use kerosene paraffin it keeps the bristles soft white spirit or we call white spirit makes them brittle and hard and they're horrible all right let's see if i can get some nice good sienna light on that on the tips of those i'll just modify that a little bit in there So it's just some of these just stick up, catch the light in front of those trees. But I don't want to do much more than that. I can do a bit of detail now. It looks like I'm doing a lot in it, but I'm but I'm not. a little bit of right I wish I'd have done that now we've got to put where that light is now sort of shining and giving that nice light coming through I'm going to put some some of that uh, umber back in there but just see if I can just brighten just a red bit of uh, ochre Go back with that uh, umber and 
yeah, no, this is yeah, it's trying very quickly. Because it's not um, the paper you're supposed to soak for some time before, on the cloth or the sponge. So that it will, the water will leach through, but the paint doesn't go back the other way. Let's see if we can. You lost and found. <laughs> you lose it and you find it again. <coughs> but it's true. You you you, um, you work away, and the picture goes away from you, and you you pull your hair out, and oh no. I can just thicken that up a little bit there. So that's, uh, you see, the paint, if it's not completely dry underneath, it will lift. Just get a little bit of a okay. Well, it's just an exercise in painting salt marsh, isn't it? All right, there's 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 nothing there other than a pond, some rushes, some distant trees, and a sky. But if if I make it look easy, I can assure you that it isn't. <coughs> but it's not impossible. It's, it's a very subtle painting. Uh, I've got the shadow, the shadow here. See, I haven't painted individual ones. It might look here and there because of the way I use that uh, this brush here. Uh, that one. It's lovely if you can. There are times when you when it will actually. I've got three of them. When it will actually open up as individual bristles, and you can spatter. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I should probably go back to some watercolour now. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. I'll put it in a mount and we'll, we'll have, a, have a look. I've got a nice mount for it. Right, let's just put that one down there. This is a tree. This came out of a out of a, a print frame. My brother-in-law and his firm were having, having a clear out. I got all the uh, 
the frames but these are slowly getting dirty because I, I'll only use them for display them. if you have a look at my Etsy channel or Patreon channel feel free the paintings for sale on Etsy <coughs> uh, it's a little bit uneven up there but it doesn't matter it's a, it's my impression of uh, of a marsh or marsh grass Norfolk uh, inspired today by Paul Ro Rowland uh, but I've done it I've done it several several times it's just my way of doing it I've not copied anybody else's I've, but we can use other people's ideas but we adapt them but I've got photographs of this so I wouldn't have painted it today had I not looked at Paul's in the British Impressionist in British Impressionist on Facebook it's not exclusively for British artists my my French friend Serge Massa is on it. He's on Ron Ransom Disciples. Have a look if you're on Facebook and you and you and you haven't seen these these uh, couple of channels that so many of us are getting involved in. Join in. I'll just raise that up. That sounds like a song, doesn't it? Song title. Whoops. Oh, there we are. The Wetlands Morden Hall Park. Quite an unpretentious little little exercise. It's a lot of nothing, but it it, it wasn't. Well, I say it, if you think it's easy, it isn't. Well, the the more you do, the better you get. That's all I can say. Just continue. Just don't give up. Don't give up when you can't do it. There was a time when oh, I would make an absolute hash. I'd be using razors and all sorts of, and the paint, the watercolor paper I wasted was quite astounding. I dread to think how much I spent on it. And now I put, I paint on the failures, paint the acrylics and the oil paints on the failures. Right, okay, folks. Thanks for thanks for watching. See you.